new series today. Uh, we're opening a new series called What's on Your Mind. Does this look familiar to anybody? This is, this is how most people live their life now. Most people have zero emotions unless it goes through a computer. And uh, it amazes me how tough people are on their computer and behind their phones. Uh, and it amazes me how hard and mean and everything. It just amazes me. But usually that's the pureness of who they are, whether they need to fix it or not. Those are the things that come out. And, and we want to deal with that. Now, now look, y'all know me well enough to know that when I tell you this is going to be a couple, two or three weeks, I'm lying. It's probably going to be two months. Uh, but we're going to deal with this because if there's anything that changed my life, it's the one statement that says this. Think about what you're thinking about. Say that with me. Say, think about what you're thinking about. You are the sum total of the five loudest voices in your life, and you are also everything that you think. That is who you are. Uh, you can put on a show, we can see your church face, and the truth is, is we never really meet you here. Uh, it's, it's when things have gone sideways and we have to talk to you or, or uh, do pastoral care or, or sit there and have a conversation with you at three in the morning. See, that's when we realize who you are. Uh, and you know what the truth is? And look, look right, everybody look right here. Uh, see, y'all, y'all got to understand something about me and April. We're perfect. <laughs> no, no, what, uh, the, yeah. so see, uh, the point is I'm lying because ain't nobody perfect. And, and for any minister of the gospel to make out like everything they say is right and everything they do is perfect is wrong. We're all imperfect people living on an imperfect planet in a fallen creation trying to walk out a perfect will. So we have to learn how to navigate this, and I'm telling you, Satan wins in your mind. That is where he wins, every time. Amen. Amen. You agree with me? Now, I, I, can, I can prove this to you by this. Half of you, most of you, uh, I can't speak for, and, I can't, and I'm just going to, just because it will bless my heart, not this church. But every other church on the planet, most of the people didn't even want to get up and go to church today. That's the truth. Y'all would be surprised at the days I fire myself on a Monday. Now, I hire myself back Monday afternoon because I know I got to be here. But the truth is, we let our thoughts get to us. And that's what we want to deal with over the next few weeks. And if this is, the fir this is our first part, if, if, if you really want your life to change, you really, really, really want to stay with us. Now, I want to say a few statements this morning before we get into Scripture. As a matter of fact, you could be going to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to deal with that. <clears throat> but before we get there, you know, we hear things, we sing songs that say, whose report will you believe? Of course, we, we're spiritual and we say we believe the report of the Lord and we sway. But the truth is, do you do that? Do you really believe the report of the Lord? Sometimes what we call winning, God calls losing. If I lose the guiding of the Holy Spirit <clears throat> to give you a piece of my mind, I just lost and I thought I won. Amen. You ain't got to amen so loud. <laughs> Any other time I won't amen, but she amens on the stuff she knows I do wrong. <laughs> because, because I won't, I, listen, if any of y'all that know anything about Alan Bailey is I'm extremely opinionated. Amen. amen. Yeah. Now that opinion's not always right, but it is an opinion. Uh, now I will tell you, now this is what I think, that it's not what the Lord said, but this is what I think. But the truth is, we cannot lose the grace and the anointing on our, on our life just by straightening somebody out. Amen. You can't do that. You can't lose what God's called you to walk into just by putting your two cents in because your two cents in will cost you a whole lot. Now, in theology, there's a few things we want to talk about today, and we're, we're going to get into the Scripture. Uh, but I've preached on this before, but I want you to understand, and when you yield to the Holy Spirit, two things happen. You get a positional truth, and you get a conditional truth. Now, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says this. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, that's any of us who are saved, amen. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or creation. Say new. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. That is your position. Do you hear me? I'm, you know, I've been wearing these glasses, and April said, you know, you just started wearing glasses like a year ago, and now you're looking over those glasses like you're looking down on people. And I find myself just doing that, like, don't y'all get this? This scripture, make a note in your Bible, 
2 Corinthians 5, 17. If you can't write in your Bible, throw it away and get a Bible you can write in. Write right next to that scripture, my position. Because in God's eyes, how he sees you is this. The old things have passed away. All things have become new. Now, we've all, you know, those of us who, who've been saved more than 24 hours know that old things like to creep up. Especially if you're sitting in the line at Walmart, Lord Jesus. Or if somebody got your parking space after you done circled 20, 20 times trying to get it. You know, those things, those things bring up things. And, and, and all of a sudden this old shows back up. Now I want to talk to you about this because that is your position. Your position is how God sees you. Your condition is how you see you. Y'all with me? If your position is correct, your condition will eventually catch up to it if you're following the Holy Spirit the right way. But the problem is, is we flipped that around in church and we've looked at people's condition and decided that if their condition's not where we want it to be, their position, their position cannot be right. But that is not how God operates. God is almost the exact opposite of how we do things. If people have their position correctly, then they're at a place where they're broken before the Lord. They're letting Him put the pieces back together. They're letting the anointing of who He is flow through their bodies and take them to a place they've never been before. Because as He is, so are we in this world. 1 John 3, uh, 2 and 3 says, Beloved, now... Uh, this, he'll catch up if he doesn't. Just listen to this. 1 John 3, uh, 2 and 3. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. Say sons. We've been dealing with that for a while, right? We are sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. Does that make sense to you? We're sons, but it doesn't yet appear what we're going to be. Are you all listening? He's already calling you how he sees you, but you don't see yourself that way yet. It hasn't appeared to you. It, the, the revelation has not hit you that he ain't mad at you. Oh, you might have some things you need to fix. You might need to get your condition working, but your position never changes. If you've given your life to him, your position is in him, and it's up to him to fix you, which why some of you Christians need to hush, because it ain't your business. However, you don't need to be putting your business out there. I told y'all, uh, 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 if you were here Wednesday night, you heard the story about our potbelly pig. And we're not going to go through that again. But, but <laughs> uh, you get the tape. But uh, we don't even have tapes anymore. I say that like tapes are a thing. They're over here like, tapes? What are tapes? <laughs> get the 8-track. Uh, <laughs> but we, we, we have situations in our life that come up. And these situations mark us. The, the, most, the most glaring situation in my life that marked me was the night that I gave my life to Jesus. Never been in a Pentecostal church before, so I thought everybody was crazy. And I gave my life to Jesus. I had a supernatural encounter. I don't have time to go through that whole story. But that moment marked me to the point that I still smell smells. I still hear sounds. I still have a moment where I remember I was in the heavenlies for a while. And something, I got up different. Now, I still had a mental battle, but I was free in my body. And, and so that's the thing that marked me. But there's also another thing that marked me, that right after that night, where I was completely set free from drugs and alcohol and, and became a different father, a different husband, she didn't know she, she was married to a stranger at that point. Like, I was completely different. Now, that might have been a good thing for her, but I was completely different. Then I go to a church immediately after that that makes fun of me because I had long hair. So I had the most... Marking moment in my life that changed me for the good, followed by the most marking moment in my life that could have thrown me off track. But I had had such an encounter with him, nobody was going to steal that from me. Now, people ask me all the time, why do you push prayer? Why do you push worship like you do? Why don't you just do a couple songs and preach some whipped cream sermon, let the smoke come out, let's just let's go home, let's get ice cream in the foyer and all that? Because had I stifled the Holy Spirit, I never would have changed. And if I don't give the opportunity for that anointing to move through this place, then we're never going to get an opportunity to experience that where we can change. 
Now, it doesn't matter your denominational background. I'm not going to sit in here and tell you everybody's got to pray in tongues and kick the stage all day long. I'm not going to tell you that. However, I am going to tell you there's a very real place in God where everything changes quickly if you let it. And, and here's what happens. That is your position hungering for something you haven't walked in yet. Your position will call you to, cause you to hunger for something where you, that your condition has to adjust to. We've built the church to where our condition adjusts truth to make it easy for us. But that is not how God designed this thing. God designed this thing for us to be pure and holy and with Him and let that condition adjust to the position. Are y'all with me? Is this making sense to you? Because when you do that, you settle into a place where you don't just have to keep asking yourself questions. You can settle into a place where you know that positionally you never change. Amen. Hey, look right here. Y'all say that like that's normal revelation. Do you realize that your position with God can never change? Oh, come on. He loves you now more than he ever will. And there's nothing you can do to stop that. That's your position. That's where you need to be. That's where you need to live. That's where you need to paint your fence. That's where you need to submit everything. That's where you need to understand, is this word that I'm about to say to somebody, because Alan Bailey fails too, is this word about to hurt or help, or does it help my position or somebody else's? That's how you answer that question. Was that God, was that me, or was that the devil? That's how you answer that question. When you settle into your position, something happens on the inside of you and you begin to see people through an empathy you didn't know you had. You begin to see people like Jesus sees them. You begin to see them, and, and listen, you don't have to keep dealing with yourself or checking yourself or, or saying, does God love me? Because that's, that's all where we get stuck. What you have to keep, keep, uh, keep checking and keep dealing with is your condition. Am I living a life that's pleasing to my Father? Not am I living a life that's holy in the church? Oh, listen to me, Christian people. Not, that, that is not our business. Now, as a leader, that's my business if you're on my team. Now, no, this is just, we, we ain't having a leadership conference. We're talking about church people. It is it's not my job to follow you home if you're just somebody that comes here and sits and praises the Lord and goes home. If, if I follow you home as a pastor and try to tell you how to live, I have just moved myself out of pastoral position and put myself in the position of God. That's wrong. However, if you come to me or you're under my leadership on my staff, and say, this is A, B, C, or D, what do you think? And I begin to lead you and guide you and say, as far as we're concerned, this is how we do things. And you move away from that, and that's a whole different ball game. Now, you have to continually check that condition, but you don't have to continually check the position. And if you can, I'm fixing to make your life really easy. If you can settle into the fact that he loves us, that he's not mad at us, that yes, we may have screwed up, there's some things we may need to repent for, we may need to adjust and move forward, but he still loves me, it makes all the other stuff easy. Most of you are stuck because you really think more about the position than your condition. Now, I'm, I'm just going to tell you, I said, this, I said this Wednesday night, and I've said it before, and it's the truth. Inside this body, Inside this, this hunk of burning steel <laughs> is the body of an Olympic swimmer. But there's some layers I got to get off there to be able to uh, sink straight to the bottom. Now, is it in there? Yes. But have I done what it takes? See, the, the fact that it's in there is my position. It's in there. But have I done what it takes to adjust my condition to be able to walk in that? Y'all listening? See, this is, I, I, I go to Planet Fitness, or I did, until, hey, when the holidays hit, baby, I ain't working out. I'm just telling you, it's useless. <clears throat> and I hadn't motivated myself to get back yet. I've crucified that part of my life, hallelujah. But... But it's funny, it's funny because I'll drive by, you know, I just drive by now when I'm going to Burger King and just wave, hey y'all. <laughs> and the parking lot is full 
of cars I don't recognize. See, because it's um, when you go to the gym and when you travel to work, you see the same cars every morning. You know what I'm talking about? Well, all of a sudden, I see, I see 30,000 cars in the parking lot. They're trying to change their condition through a, through a New Year's, oh, I'm just going to go do it. And it lasts about a week and a half. Because their, their position was never correct. They were just doing it because, oh, it's New Year's, I've got to make a res resolution. Rather than recognizing there's something inside of me that's better than this. What do I need to do? What information do I need? What do I need to do to change this? What do I need to do to adjust this? It's the same thing in the spirit. You have to recognize your position. It never changes. He loves you. He wants to fill you with his spirit. He wants to fill you with his word, with his wisdom. He wants to fill you to where your thoughts are his thoughts. But what are you willing to do to change that? How do you deal with the condition? And it's very simple. It always starts with prayer. Number one, it always starts with prayer. Most people try to birth things in themselves that they've never spent time with the Lord about. Most people will try to, and, and look, I've been in ministry a long time, so I'm just going to tell you the truth. Most people will try to take portions of a ministry or even start a ministry that they've not spent time in prayer over. They just feel called. Are y'all with me? Because if you can feel called to something, listen, I'm fixing to mess you up now. You can feel called to something and be wrong. You can absolutely be wrong. You have to get before the Lord because I never felt called to pastor. Some of y'all are saying, Lord Jesus, I wish you'd listen. <laughs> I never felt called to pastor. I felt compelled, but I never felt called. I felt called to evangelism. And let me explain that to you. Because I, I played music. I, I was a traveling musician. That's how I made money. Uh, Y'all know my story. So, so in my world, traveling to a different city and performing and leaving was normal. So I felt which is a cuss word in the spirit, I felt like that's what I'm supposed to do for Jesus. But that's not what he had a plan for. He had a plan for me to be rock solid as a pastor. And now, don't get me wrong, when he compelled me, oh, I felt that. But I didn't go by the feeling. I went by the pulling. There's a difference. You can feel like this is the person I'm supposed to spend my life with. Then three years later in 25,000 counseling sessions, you're like, Pastor, why'd you let me marry him? That is how life works. You have to birth this in the spirit first, which means, listen to me now, that if prayer is the number one priority, you pray from the position. You pray from knowing he's listening. Don't raise your hands, but how many of you have said in recent days, well, when I pray, it just feels like it goes to the ceiling and falls flat. There's no faith in that. There's no position in that. Are y'all with me? There's no ability to know that he's not mad at you. But, oh, here's another one of them sermons. I wish I'd just screw your head off and shove it in. Because if you can see yourself the way he sees you, all of this mental struggle would end. Because if he sees you, let me just say this. When you were born, you were born in the eyes of God, good, pure, perfect, and holy. These babies cooing. Now, we ain't, we ain't talking about you know, when they get old enough to start being heathens. I'm talking about when they're just cooing. They were born to be pure, perfect, and holy. Everything that's added on to them is either by parenting or personality problems. So whatever you blame, well, that's just how I am, Pastor. No, that ain't how you is. You wasn't created that way. You got to get back to the position of, Lord, is what I'm about to say, and I fail in this regularly. Don't, I'm not being superior. I'm just telling you it's time for us to learn. Lord, am I doing what I'm about to do from my position of pureness, holiness, and perfection in you? Or for selfish reasons, or because that's just my personality? Whoa, awfully tight in here now, isn't it? Well, that's just who I am. No, that ain't who, that's the curb feelers you put on the car. But the car didn't come with that. People say, oh, oh, they see, they see that gray Lexus that April drives go by. They go, April, that ain't April, that's a car. You see how idiot, I mean, how idiotic we can be? There she goes. 
Well, it could be me driving. She's much prettier than I am. Do not amen that. <laughs> but we equate things with people. I see that big black dump truck. There goes Charlie. That dump truck, that ain't Charlie. But we equate that with him and his business. Are y'all with me? That is how our minds work. That's why you have to stop thinking in terms of human mindsets and move into the spirit of seeing things for what they are, not what's associated with it. We associate, listen, I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I was Baptist until I went heathen at, at old enough to run. And then when I came back, I came back in Pentecostal church. And, and, and I'd never been anything like that before. Uh, but the truth is, 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 I was always taught that you equate Pentecostal churches to snake handlers. That's true. It's just the truth. I mean, y'all come on, be honest. That's the truth, right? Now, let me just tell you something. I hate them. I, I believe if you don't have shoulders, you should burn in hell. That's just my personal opinion. <laughs> if, if, you, if you slither, you need to be gone. Gone with thee. However, and, and let me just say this while I'm on my personal pet peeves here. <laughs> I hate even, this just turned into nine weeks because I've wasted the day. Nothing drives me crazier than to have an opportunity to flow in the gifts of, spirit, of the Spirit and see great things happen and really flow in the pureness of the Holy Spirit and it be ruined by a Pentecostal movement where people just move into emotionalism and they don't see what God's really trying to do because it creates fear. Now let me explain something to you. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman and it was never designed to create fear in the heart of people when it came to the Holy Spirit. Ever, but that is what people do with pure things. Are y'all with me? Come on now, y'all. That, that was weak. Y'all with me? Because the thing is this: He wants more for you out of your position than you want for you. And there is a place in the spirit. I announced this in, in the meeting, and I'm going to announce it now. Uh, every every morning, between seven and eight a.m., we're here. There's a bunch of men in here. We're in here, I think there were six or seven Friday. We're walking around this place. The lights are low. The music's loud. And we're praying in the Holy Ghost. Well, what does that mean? That means we're praying in tongues. That's what that means. We're praying in tongues over these chairs. We're, 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 we're touching instruments. We're believing God, not just for growth of a church, but for growth of people. Because you have to see who you are in your position before you can ever see your condition change. You're trying to fix yourself and you don't have what it takes. I don't, I don't mean to, to make out like you're not mentally strong. I'm just telling you, you don't have what it takes to fix a spiritual problem. You can't do it. Not without Him. And you have to seek Him through prayer. Everything's birthed through prayer. That's number one. Number two is this. Once you're praying, you have to start listening. That's number two. You pray, you listen. Because prayer is not a one-way channel. It's a, you, you see these boys talking on the walkie-talkie. They talking back and forth. Your job is to listen as much as you talk. You know how I know we don't know how to do that? Listen, how many of you, and, and I'm going to raise my hand too, how many of us are that person or know that person that whenever somebody's talking to you, you're not hearing a thing they're saying. You're waiting for them to finish so you can talk back. I'll be honest. No, there's no such thing as a conversation. Nobody has a conversation anymore. Everybody, have you ever turned on the news? My Lord. Nobody's listening to anybody. But yet God is forever listening to you. But he wants to talk back. Creflo told this story one time. Creflo Dollar, those of you who don't know who that is, it's fine. But Creflo told this story. I was in a minister's conference. It's been almost 20 years ago now. They're in the Faith Dome, and this, you know, 3,000, 5,000 seat sanctuary. And he was talking about how he got there. And uh, we were there for church growth, so that's what we we're there to talk about. And uh, he said, You know, I was in the school, in school cafeterias where I started. And, and he said, The Lord told me I needed to pray. I had to birth this in prayer first. <laughs> and he said, He was all over that cafeteria praying in tongues, just shouting, and, Yes, Lord, hallelujah, and doing all that stuff. And he said, That was three or four days. And he said, The fifth day, he was so hoarse, 
that he was coughing and he caught a fly in his throat. And he said at that moment, after he hacked that fly up, now that's his story, not mine. He said, the Lord said, I've been needing to talk to you for four days. <laughs> been, been just rap, 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 rap. Where's Gabriel at? He's back there on camera. <laughs> Why are you laughing? We have an attorney in our house. His name is Gabriel. And that kid can argue you out of anything. And I don't know how. But a lot of it has to do with his humor. Because it's it just so funny. At that point, you're just like, shut up, kid. But the point is, is he has learned. And, and it's, i got to give you credit. That's an amazing feat that you can out-talk me. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. But we do that with God. God is trying to get you to your purest, perfect, most holy point. And you're trying to talk him out of it on why you can't or why you don't or you don't have the tools. And, and let me just listen, listen up, sweetheart. You don't have the tools anyway. They're all his. He put in you what you needed but you access those things by him. This is where grace and faith has to work together. We can't just be in the grace movement. We can't just be in the faith movement. They work together. Grace is what created. Faith is what grabbed. You can't just say, oh, it's mine in Jesus' name and not even know what you're claiming. We, listen, in, in, in our word of faith world, we've spent way too much time believing for money and not believing for our position to be right. We want stuff and not to deal with our stuff. Amen. So what you got to understand is this. We have to see who we are in him. And I told you the very first scripture. Let's go back to that. Very first scripture. 2 Corinthians 5. My Lord, I got three pages and I'm, on a, I'm on back, going back to the first scripture. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man or woman or child or teenager... Listen to me, listen to me, hey, listen to me, all you on the front row, Gabriel, all y'all, Zion, your age does not matter. You can accomplish more in Christ where you're at. You don't have to be 40. You don't have to be 20. You don't have to wait on somebody to tell you you are everything you need to be to accomplish what he's called you to. Quit, quit buying that lie that you can't because it's about your position. If any man... Any teenager, any person, any woman, any child be in Christ, they are new creations. Say new. Old things pass away. Say old. New, old. Now, we ain't talking about vintage and it's put back together so it's pretty. We're talking about old. See, there's a difference. There's a difference in, 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 in pulling up in, 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 in the show truck and pulling up in the rust bucket. That's old. So... Man, I gotta find somewhere to start landing this plane. I hope y'all y'all put your seatbelts on. We'll be here in a minute. We, we y'all gotta understand when your position is correct. When your position is correct, little things begin to peel off of you, and all of a sudden, a few weeks from now, you realize something's not quite as hard to overcome as you as it was just a few weeks. All of a sudden, that person's voice isn't as loud. All of a sudden, that pull toward those cigarettes isn't as strong. All of a sudden, that 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 hunger to drink isn't there. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, that anger. Of course, that's where I'm at. I still got to work on that. All of a sudden, that fly off the handle thing is not there. All of a sudden, I'm just gonna. Bust her an eye when she walks in here. All that begins to go away. But you got to get the position right because you can't fix that stuff without him. You just can't. You put it all on there. You put it all on, but you can't get it off. It takes him. Is this making sense to y'all? Yeah, this is very basic. I, I want to get so deep into some other stuff. But, but if I can get just this group of people to understand their position, Walker County don't stand a chance. Jesus changed the whole world with 12 and one of them hung himself. So we're in pretty good shape. They didn't have all the pretty stuff we have, but you know what they had? They had their position. They knew when Jesus said go do it, he put in them the ability to go do it. The Bible says that heaven and earth, all, everything was given to Jesus. And when Jesus died on the cross, he gave everything to us. He put us back in original condition. 
One thing in this country that drives me crazy is that people do not understand the original intent of the Constitution. They don't understand it. They want to change things for the, to, to benefit their party that 20 years from down the line is going to hurt everybody. They're not, they're not thinking down the road. Same thing with the biblical principles. The original intent of Jesus was to take you back to the original intent of Adam. Now, I ain't telling y'all to run around naked. That ain't what, don't be going out here and say, Pastor Allen said we're going back to naked. That's not what I said. But ask, let me ask you this question. Do you ever read where Adam struggled to have food? Do you ever read where Adam struggled to pay his power bill? Well, I mean, there was light. Come on. Do you, do you ever read, do you ever read, listen to me now, do you ever read where Adam rebelled against God. It's not there. The only thing he said was, this woman you gave me, which means he never rebelled, but he blamed. If you're blaming, you're not in your position. And it cost him everything. And we're paying for it. When you get back in the position, Jesus got back in Adam's position. This is so wonderful. Jesus got back in Adam's position to where he didn't hunger, thirst. Everything he needed was provided. Jesus was rich. Y'all need to go read the book of John. Jesus wasn't broke. Y'all need to get over this poverty mindset. But, but he had everything he needed. When he was born, he had kings give him gold. Come on, y'all. Y'all think he spent that at three years old. Let's just be real. So, so the truth is, is he had substance and he also had spiritual wisdom. He had everything he needed now listen to me, the beauty of Jesus is that everything he had, and I mean everything, physically, financially, spiritually, emotionally, socially, everything he had when he was murdered on that cross, when you accept him, comes to you. He, listen to me, he took your sickness, your disease, your perversion, your problems, your issues, he took that so he could give you his social status, his spiritual status, his ability to do things. Puts you back to original intent so that you could walk like Adam was designed to walk to where lions may be there, but not only are you not afraid of them, you named them. Oh, see, y'all may, oh, pray the Lord, tiger, tiger, swing tiger. Listen, wake up to who you are. Amen. Quit losing when you don't have to, the Alabama fan said, pray the Lord. <laughs> Edit. Uh, you cannot... Live your life living in a situation where you don't know your position, not knowing your authority, not knowing who you are in Christ, but still you bounce around and go to church and you're frustrated and nothing's where my giving ain't working, my praying ain't working. Why, why, Pastor, why? Because your position is not right in your brain, although it's never changed. You think you're less than you are. You think that you're not with him. You think that he sees you as different. He sees you. Let's go back to that scripture. 2 Corinthians, throw it back up there. Come on. This is how you see it. If any man, he is what? New. This is the beauty of the word, and I'm going to start coming in here. The word is perpetual. So every time you speak this over you, it becomes new again. You get to go before the Lord. You do not stop repenting the day you get saved. You start. That means wherever you screwed up, you might have some things to fix. You might have some apologies to make. But there comes a point where you have to recognize, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm messed up. Come on, praise team. I'm messed up. And because I'm messed up, I, for, I ask you to forgive me. And the minute you say, Lord, forgive me, this scripture becomes real to you again. All things. Say all things. How many of y'all messed up this week? Raise your hands. We all did. Yeah, praise the Lord. How many of y'all can't wait till 2020 because that's going to be your year because you done screwed up 2019? Praise the Lord. We ain't even in February yet. That's not how we live. We live in perpetual newness. The more we repent, the more we seek, the more we pray, the more we listen, the more we become like him. Amen. Is that making sense to you? Stand with me. Come on, just stand with me. Just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. They're going to sing softly, but just lift your hands. Just lift your hands all across this place. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you for it.
Come on, lift your hands. I want you to. I just want you to. I want you to get your position right in your brain, which means that if you could see your perfect day, if you could see how, if you had a choice, how things would be, if you could see, Lord, if it was just like this, if let all that go and just say, Lord, I want to be perfect in your sight. And the good news is, He already sees you that way. So, Father, I pray right now over every person in this room every single person in this room that the blessing of God is at work not just to pour out on their lives but to wake them up to the fact that you're not angry with them that you're not mad at them you're not causing their pain you're the healer of their pain you cannot give them what you do not have but Lord what you do have through Jesus you've given to them And that is walking in a new place. So right now where you're at with every head bowed, with every eye closed, with nobody looking around. If you're in this place and you say, Pastor Allen, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I want to give my life to Jesus today. I want to rededicate my life today. Lord, I've I've gotten away from you. I've never accepted you. I've never never changed. Whatever it is, wherever you're at. Now, I'm not talking about you got saved three weeks ago and you screwed up. We ain't talking about that. We're talking about you need to come home or you've never accepted Jesus before. Nobody in this church is going to embarrass you. Nobody's going to pull you out. All I ask is that when I count to three, you put your hand up and right back down. And everybody in this church is going to pray together. If you're in this place and you need Jesus, Lift your hands. One, two, three. All across this place. Amen. I see you. You can put them right back down. Hands went up. People are getting saved today. I'm going to wait one more minute. If you need Jesus, put your hand up and right back down. I see them. Put them right back down. Amen. Amen. All right, church. People are getting saved today. Oh, those of you who raised your hand, you're about to become blameless. People can remind you of what you did, but Jesus, he forgot about all that. This is your moment. I want you all in church, I want you to repeat with me. Let's do it with them. They're getting saved. Say, Father. Come on, those that raise your hands, say this with me. Everybody join. Say, Father, thank you that you sent Jesus to die for me. I give myself to you. Fill my heart. You died for me. And I'm going to live for you. I'm getting my position right. My condition is changing. The blessing is at work. And my life will forever be changed in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. People got saved today.